Hey guys, welcome back. Another episode of Banish the Doubt. Today I want to continue with this uh, sort of a theme I have going on here called mindset. And it really, I've been been thinking about this, obviously, a mindset for quite some time. But um, really, uh, what what really gets me uh, sort of juiced up is hearing stories about people, uh, basically common people doing uncommon things. Now, you see the name up here, Tom Brady. First of all, anybody sees that name, it's right here, right? Yeah, right there. They're not going to think a common person, but... Really, you know, everybody who's ever done uncommon things, you know, yes, there may be um, some people may be gifted with incredible talent um, that others just don't have. But really, it comes down to a mindset. I remember several years ago when I was a young man, younger than I am, because I'm a young man now and will be for a long time. That's my mindset. I was I was introduced to a network marketing uh, company my first time in my life ever heard of it at the time. Uh, some of you may have recall may, may remember the name um, Amway, and <clears throat> didn't know about it at the time. Just heard this incredible you know story about how much money somebody can make, and being a young guy, obviously that the dollar signs what what really got me. So. I got involved, but my mindset was not nearly uh, what it takes for somebody to succeed in that type of an endeavor. However, there was a story about a young man down in, I believe it was Florida. Tommy, I forget his, um, I'm trying to remember his last name just as I'm making this video. Um, Anyway, young guy, younger than me at the time, and living in a trailer park. Now, a lot of you here, I think, in all these rags to riches stories. Keep in mind, though, as you're listening to me talk, what your emate, you know, your sort of default thinking is affecting what I'm going to show you here in a second. Okay, so just kind of keep that in in your in your mind. So Tommy, um, yeah, if he has last name, was introduced to this, and this is the days way before you know internet and cell phones and um, I think maybe fax machines were the the, the new thing. So um, he was obviously hooked. What he did was he didn't listen to outside. He didn't listen to the fact that he was living in a trailer park. He didn't listen to the naysayers about, oh, you're doing that Amway thing. And for those of you who don't know, Amway um, <clears throat> produces uh, cleaning household items, cleaning items, things of that nature. Maybe more today, but... Back then, it was like, I think they got into vitamins and what have you. What, and, the, and the whole premise behind network marketing was that, you know, you join and you sell these products and you get other people, you motivate them to sell the products and build a business. And if you build a network, the larger the network, you know, the more money you make. But here's why I'm saying this. So Tommy found out that you can make so much money. You could, you know, life-changing generational money in and, and in sales in general, sales is the highest paid profession in all of the professions in the world. What he did, he would absolutely just open up at that time, back then it was called the Yellow Pages or, you know, the phone book. Okay, so this giant book about yay thick and it had everybody's phone number in there. It was listed. He would just open up to whatever area, whatever amount, of, and two pages may have, I don't know, 400 names on there with phone numbers. He will just start calling. Hey, do you want to get rich? Hey, do you want to be rich? Hey, do you? And maybe out of 400 calls, he probably got 398 no's and hangups. He ended up making it to the top because he would not take no for an answer. His mindset, okay, was that he wasn't this guy living in a trailer park. He wasn't this guy. He said, I, I, I don't care. He, I, don't, I think he, he needed to borrow money to get to meetings and things of that nature. Common people doing uncommon things. Okay, so here's how I want to start off with. He, people able to heal themselves, set up new careers, healing old scars and wounds that have kept them anchored to the past, creating better opportunities for themselves. Most people, however, go through our life and we wait 
for trauma to take place, for the disease to happen. Like in my in my case, you know, getting cancer, um, going through bankruptcy, divorce, whatever it may be. My question is, you know, why wait? Like I've always mentioned in these previous videos, guys, if you are watching this video, you attracted me and this video to you. Keep that in your mind, okay? Now, what you do with this opportunity, it's up to you. But you've attracted this. So it's almost like the universe going, going over to you going, um, opportunity knocking. Are you ready? It's up to you to open the door and walk through. Understand this. This is a great quote that I heard, uh, I think it was last year. They can't, and this is by um, Bob, um, Bob Proctor. The cave we fear to enter holds the treasure that we seek. Okay, the cave we feel fear to enter holds the treasure that we seek. I also heard another great quote this morning, and I wrote it down in my in my notes here. Um, let's see, where is he here? Um, uh, I guess I don't. I guess I didn't save. Oh, here it is. The goals, this is from an Olympic athlete, gold medal athlete. The goals will find you if you if you determine your direction first, then follow the journey. I'll say it again. The goals will find you if you determine your direction, your mindset, first, and then follow the journey. Okay? So just kind of recap, I spoke about this last night in another video. Tom Brady. Tom Brady, in my estimation, was a common guy was obviously done uncommon things. For those of you who don't know, you can Google Tom Brady. It has a lot to do with a lot of Super Bowl victories, championships. Tom Brady was a sixth round pick. So this week is the NFL draft. And the first round, first you know, like 10 guys who get selected, they're probably going from working you know, in a mall, flipping burgers, literally today to next week, they're multi, multi-millionaires. Okay, so that's first round. He went to the sixth round. Basically, by that point, it's yeah. We think this guy's okay. We'll take a you know we'll take a flyer on him. That was him. Okay, he was the fourth backup on his team, meaning there was a starter, there was the backup, there was that backup's backup, and then there was Tom Brady. The first season he sat out, he he sat on the bench, but he barely made the team. He and the coaches said, yeah, we, something about this guy that you know we we like now. Interestingly as well, in a preseason game, Tom had the ball and he was running with it. And a defenseman hit him so hard, it it, it actually it dislodged his helmet from his head. His helmet went flying down. There's a video of it flying down the field. Other The quarterback who got selected before him, the team that was to select prior to New England Patriots taking Tom Brady, took another quarterback because they said, well, he's got better fundamentals and whatever he – and I'll go through what the scouts said about that guy compared to Tom. That coach who had the opportunity to take Tom Brady and, and passed said that other player had a similar circumstance where he got hit, a jarring hit, not as bad as Tom, but a pretty, pretty hellacious hit. And he said that separated that guy from Tom Brady. Don't remember that guy's name. There's probably a reason he, he didn't last in the league. The scout said Tom was too skinny. He can't really throw all that well. Imagine that, a quarterback, six six Super Bowl championships. Runs a 40-yard dash in over five seconds, which is basically running in mud. He's too slow. Now, here's the thing. This is what I want to talk about, okay? Common people doing uncommon things. When he was in training camp, he walked up to the owner of the team who was there wa watching training camp. And he introduced himself. Now, Bob Kraft, Robert Kraft, is the owner of the team. And in, in, in an interview, he he said this. He said, Tom reached out his hand and said, hi, my name is Tom Brady, Mr. Mr. Kraft. He, called, he referred to us as Mr. Kraft. I just want to say hello and introduce myself. Kraft, Bob Kraft said to him, yeah, I know who you are. You're the sixth round pick. And then he, Robert Kraft, said he could feel Brady's eyes kind of piercing right into Robert Kraft, the owner of the company, his, he's peering into his eyes and he said to him, yes, he said, and I am the greatest investment this organization has ever made. Six round pick. All this here. 
the mindset, guys. He didn't, he didn't listen to that. Just like the young kid Tommy in Amway. He didn't listen to, oh, that's that Amway crap. Ah, you're never going to make nobody, – nobody ever makes money in that. Didn't listen. So this is what I'm talking about. Now I want to get into how this – how our, how we think today and how we've been thinking and how it has affected ourself and our life and why it ends up with trauma. All thoughts, okay, your thought, your today. Now, think about this. As we end this video, I want to end this with, and I'm going to kind of preface it now, how you start your day, okay, changes everything. All thoughts carry energy and frequency. This is from J Dr. Joe Dispenza, okay? All thoughts carry energy and frequency. The average person, okay, the common person, we think between sixty to 70,000 thoughts per day. 90% of them, however, are the exact same as yesterday. 90%, okay? They're, they're the same redundant thoughts, okay? So all our thoughts also have an effect on our body, all thoughts, okay? They produce the same effects on our, on our bodies, same energy going out to your field, okay? So all thoughts produce an energy, and that energy goes out to our field, this is why, and you've heard me, you may have heard me say this in a previous video. Whenever you're around somebody, and you, we've all been there, okay, and let's say somebody's going through the trauma that I just talked about in the previous page here, and you come up to them and you ask them how they're doing, and they're saying, and they're covering up, they're like, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. But the energy that they're emitting, they can't, it's, it's unconscious. You can pick up on you pick up on that energy. You say, "Yeah, something doesn't seem right with you. You just seem off." You're you're not saying this, but you're feeling this energy coming from them doesn't feel right. And you say, "I could feel something doesn't seem right with you." That's what you're feeling. You're feeling the energy. Okay. So these same thoughts. This is our life. Okay, so 90% of our thoughts are the same as the previous day. We end up going around in this cycle. We're like a hamster on a hamster wheel. These thoughts, these same, right, redundant, regurgitated thoughts day after day after day. And I don't know, let's say conservatively, you've been doing this for 20, 30, 30, 30 years, 20 years. Okay, that same and your body, our bodies wear, they wear the energy and the frequency. We wear it, okay, through our traumas, through our health challenges, through divorce, through whatever it may be, okay, failed, failed marriages, whatever it may be, because we don't realize we're unconscious. So the same thoughts lead us to the same choices, which leads to the same behaviors, which then create the same experiences, right? They produce the same feelings in our body and the same emotions. These same emotions drive the same thoughts. So that's why I say we're like a hamster in a hamster wheel. We're running and running and running. And in our life, in many times, our life mirrors the same life as our parents or the people who have been our role models. I'll give you a quick illustration of this, and you may be understanding. You may say, "Yep, George, you're absolutely right. I feel the same." Well, I'm, you know, maybe you're married or what have you. So, my father was in a in a marriage prior to meeting my mom. Okay, and he his marriage fell fell apart. Well, it was falling apart. His his wife passed away from uh, cancer of the uterus. And then he met my mom. My mom was a single lady, obviously. And, and my father was, he had a daughter from a previous marriage, from, from that marriage. And when they met, they got married. And eventually, you know, I came along and my brothers. My life, I met my wife. My wife had a daughter from a previous marriage. And we have kids. My wife has a good, secure government job. My father had a good, secure government job. Isn't that interesting? How we just sort of mirror 
we, we just sort of go down the same road as previous. Until, with me, things changed. I got cancer. My parents didn't get that, but I did. So that was a major um, fork in the road for me, if you will. Once you see the word malignant, it kind of changes things. So that I have two choices. I could either continue down the same road as my parents did, or I could pivot and go down a different road. And I decided to pivot and go down a different road, which led me to Louise Hay, which led me to Abraham Hicks, which led me to Dr. Joe Dispenza, Dr. Wayne Dyer, Dr. Hawkins, I can go on and on, James Allen, the book As a Man Thinketh. Interestingly, here's an interesting connection. The book As a Man Thinketh, that was part of Amway's required reading for, for their associates, network marketers. Isn't that interesting? Hmm? So we'll continue. These same emotions drive the same thoughts. Our biology, okay, um, is also is also connected to our neurocircuitry and our neurochemistry, okay? Our hormones are equal to how we, all this, okay, our biology, neurocircuitry, neurochemistry, and our hormones are equal to how we think, act, and feel. That's all connected. Our biology, our neurocircuitry, our neurochemistry, and our hormones are all equal to how we think, how we act, and how we feel. Interestingly, feel I have here in, in all the emotional parts I haven't read because in the color red is because in the Bible, the color red is depicted very prominently. The Red Sea that was supposedly parted by Moses. That never actually happened. The Red Sea, the red are the emotions being parted. Our carnal knowledge, our, our lower mind, and our higher mind. That's he parts that, and the people walk through the middle. Okay, the devil is depicted in red. Hell is red. That's all the emotions. That's all that that lower mind thinking, carnal mind. And if you ever watch any of my other videos about um, Moses, you would see how I I talk about that, and, the, and you can want go back to my video and watch that. So how we think, how we act, and how we feel. Okay. That, that is our, makes up our personality. Our personality is made up of how we think, how we act, and how we feel. It's who you are. It, our personality then creates our personal reality. So how we think, how we act, and how we feel creates our personal reality. In order to change our personal reality then, we have to start thinking about what we've been thinking about. So we have to start thinking about what it is we've been thinking about. So if you're watching this video and you're saying, yeah, there's something happened in my life or nothing has happened. I'm just, there's a change I want to make and I'm not sure how to do it, how to go about it. You start thinking about what you've been thinking about and how do we do this? So the word meditate, the word meditate means to become, to become familiar with. So the word meditate means to become familiar with. So when we meditate, when we go, we get quiet. Okay, when we go and meditate, we take no thoughts. Okay, this is why in the Bible, in Matthew, Jesus says five times: "Take no thought, take no thoughts, take no thoughts, take no thoughts, take no thoughts." It's because he was talk talking about meditation. We go inward. We go inside. We start to think about what we've been thinking about. This is how we change. So when we're in a situation, so for instance, this morning I was in a situation driving my son to school and a person came over and they cut me off. Well, they just, cut, they just moved in front of me. There's a distinction there. I'll make that in a second. 
person moved in front of me, and then they slowed down because there was traffic in front of them. They were trying to get to an exit. I slowed down, and we, you now my son and my little nephew who was in kindergarten was in the back seat. I had to slow down pretty quickly, and I could see the guy in, the, in my rear view mirror slowing down very quickly. He started beeping because we almost had a chain reaction accident. Here's an, here is an example of thinking about what we've been thinking about, okay? So in the moment, I, I, I beep my horn. The person behind me beeped their horn instinctively. But I immediately started to understand, like, okay, this person obviously realized last minute, oh, crap, I have to get over there. And they pulled in front of me. Now, the distinction I just talked about. The ego says they cut me off. Big distinction. The ego says you cut me off. The ego says you're in front of me. I have to be in front of you. You're not getting in front of me. Who we become when we start thinking about what we think, what we're thinking about, we say, okay, that person had a cut, in, had a bit in, get in front of me, because obviously they realized last minute that they had to get over to that exit. What I'm saying is, in that moment, I collected myself. I realized what had happened. And I just moved on. I just got around them and I moved on. Interestingly, the guy behind me, as soon as I got went by this person, they tried to get over to the right, which that lane was going to end. And they were going to go flying past me. See, so there's the, there's the chain. There's the difference. I was able to collect myself because I become aware of what I've been thinking about. I'm thinking I'm more. I am starting to think about what I've been thinking about. That person was still caught up in the angst, angst, the and that and that angst, that emotion of that moment has that type of an effect. We just just discussed this, okay, in the previous paper. Effect on the body. I pause there for a second. I want you to understand that. Okay, I want you to really to observe this and really sort of digest that. I want you to think of that same type of situation taking place, if we say 90% of what we're thinking about is what we, our previous thoughts from the, our thoughts from the previous day. Now, can you imagine layering this, okay, over 10 years, 20 years, 25 years, 30 years, 35 years, you could be conservative, okay? And now you start to understand the body just can't, it, it, it's like this, if I, it's like me with this marker, okay? If I make that line, it's nice and thick. Okay? It's nice and bright. That's us at a younger generation, a younger, our younger years. But by age 35, okay, we become a memorized set. That guy was older than 35. I could tell you the guy behind me. But we become a, become a memorized set of Emotional reactions, right? Laying on the horn, then trying to drive around me really quick. Um, hardwired behaviors, right? So that that behavior was hardwired, and it was in me because I beat my horn, right? I kind of got nervous in a second. Hardwired behaviors, um, reactions, hardwired reactions, behaviors, and perceptions. There's the other part I want to bring up. I perceived this person as what? Cutting me off. They weren't cutting me off. They just realized they had to get over to the exit. The perception, though, has that changed because that took me seconds to change and just sort of, okay, get back into traffic. <clears throat> I want to kind of give you another illustration would be like the gazelle being chased by the lion. Okay, if the gazelle is able to outrun the lion, the gazelle easily goes back to just grazing. It's over. The stimulus, the event is over. So I kind of feel myself like almost like the gazelle. I just kind of went back grazing. I got back into traffic, started talking to my son and my, my little nephew. Because here's the other thing. This is a, an extremely, extremely important point, guys. If you're a parent or you're a role model in some case, in some, in some way, which a lot of us are, I want to underscore this, okay? My son was in the car with me. Doesn't matter what I said to him. How I was reacting versus responding says everything. I want to say it again. 
how I responded versus react had more of a um, an effect on him than anything else. So go back to my parents, okay? So my father grew up in a generation when what you did was you go get a good job. Doesn't matter the job, just go get a job and you work at the job. But, and I, and I pause again, because at the end of the day, the job, you do your eight hours, whatever it may be, you as a man deserve to go to the pub, the bar, have a couple pops, you know? Hey, get a little buzz going. You understand what I'm saying here, don't you? Now you come home, and I'm, I don't know, a year old maybe, whatever, two years old at the most. Mm. The effect that had on his family, because he is not in his right mind. I'm not saying you can't have a drink, but have a drink. But you come home, and now you're buzzed. Your mindset is fogged because of the alcohol because you needed to take the, the substance, the to start to take the, the substance into your system, okay? So I talked about chemistry, our body's chemistry, and that how what kind of an effect that has on the family. Because a young boy at one years old, two years old, he doesn't see like, oh yeah, that's just that, he had a couple pops. Yeah, that's just, that's normal, that's what they do. But how he interacted with my mom. So how I, responded to the situation, the stimulus, the, the lady, uh, I'm assuming it was a lady, I saw her pulling in front of me, not cutting me off, and how I was able to respond to that, said everything that I needed to want and I wanted to say to my son in that moment, like these things happen, we just, you know, we deal with it in, this, in the moment, we move on, back to talk and everything is fine. So that's what I'm talking about, okay? So in meditation, be, you learn to become familiar with who? Yourself. You, you go into that quiet space. What Jesus said in the Bible, you go to your closet, you close the door. The closet is the upper mind, the right hemisphere of our mind. We close the door, we get into a quiet space. Take no thoughts, meaning you don't take any thoughts into that upper chamber, that closet, that, that right hemisphere. That's what, he was refer that's what he was referring to. Okay, so we go there. And this is how, ladies and gentlemen, uncommon, common people can do uncommon things. Because what we do is we start to download the, the messaging. We start to connect with who we are inside. And who we are on the inside is perfect, is that universal consciousness, that Christ consciousness, if you will, that God consciousness, who, however you want to say it, okay, this, this source energy. That there is no strife. There, is, there, are no, there is no stress. There are no problems. This, ladies and gentlemen, is how common people are able to do uncommon things. So if you like what I had to say today and you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit the subscription notification, hit, hit the subscribe button and hit the, um, the notification bell so you receive all my, my videos. If you want to go back and watch my video on, um, on Moses, Go ahead and take, you know, take a look at that and all my other videos. If you like what you heard today, give us a thumbs up and feel free to comment down below anything that you've gone through, how maybe this video has helped you. Um, you know, if you know about Tom Brady, great. Let me know about that. Okay. Or anything else that maybe you have done in your life or maybe this situation with this, this lady, you know, moving her car in front of me and, and my, my dad having his drinks. You know, maybe you have a, a similar story like that. Okay, so in any, any event, guys, feel free to share, to share these videos because the more videos like this that get out to the world, the more people see these videos are able to start, common people start to do uncommon things to start, help to uh, relieve themselves of health situations or whatever else going on in their life. It only helps to make the world a, a better place, a more peaceful place. I appreciate all you guys for watching my videos. And uh, as always, God bless, and I'll see you again soon.